a number of people asked me about this specific subject, was, which was how do I go about photographing wildlife on private land? So that's what we're going to be discussing in today's video. So the likelihood is that you've seen something that you're really interested in, whether it's a bird or an animal, and you've probably been close enough to watch it, maybe through binoculars, or if you're really lucky, maybe you've even been able close enough to photograph it, uh, but it's actually on private land. There's maybe a boundary, good chance that you're on a boundary, maybe even a public footpath, uh, maybe by a hedgerow, and you really, really want to get onto that private land to explore and to get some pictures. So in this situation, it really is going to be a case of just knocking on the door. This is probably going to be the, the best and the quickest way to do it. I know that's going to be difficult for a lot of people, and it certainly was for me, and it still is to an extent nowadays. Um, but if you can do that, that's going to be the best way. Just knock on the door, introduce yourself, be polite as you can, um, tell them what you want to do. Just be very upfront, tell them that you love wildlife, you're into photography. Um, if you've seen a particular species on their land, and I would actually, I would, talk about that and say you know maybe I've seen shorty and owls whatever it is I'd love the chance to come and photograph them and tell them how you're going to do that as well uh, if you just kind of say oh I'd love to get access to your land to do photography and you're a bit more vague then I think people aren't going to be as open to that they're going to be a bit more suspicious you know there's a lot of weirdos around these days um, weirdos yeah, so um, if you've got a website for photography, direct them to that. If you've got a business card, that's fantastic. Uh, send them towards any social media site where you regularly post images and they can look at that. And I think also if you come at it from a, an environmental point of view in terms of wanting to uh, conserve species and habitat, then that might help as well. Finding who owns the land, I think it's going to be a bit easier if it's kind of farmland. Hopefully you'll actually see the farm, a farmhouse nearby. That's going to be the best bet. If not, then just look for the nearest house uh, to the land where you, you want to get access. So that's one way of doing it, which I guess is the more difficult option. Sometimes it might work, uh, but it's not gonna work all the time, I'm sure. What I would say is try and make sure that you make everyone you know aware of what it is that you do. So everybody you work with, all your friends, make sure they all know that you're into wildlife photography, you're really, really passionate about photographing wildlife. The reason is that if anyone hears of any opportunities, someone they know who owns some land, then there's a good chance they're gonna tell you you might be able to do something from that. And that's kind of what's happened for me. So the main way I've got to work on private land photographing really is just from getting to know people. That is the number one. I've done it in different ways. One example was a friend who knows someone who has a farm and I got onto there just going out, she's gonna let you go visit. So I went and visited and then it went from there, I was working on there for a number of years afterwards. And the other one, this is probably the best one, I think you're gonna have more success with this, is if you can get to know somebody who is involved in wildlife or conservation in some way. So I've got to know a number of people in the same way, particularly with a local wildlife trust. That's exactly why I'm stood here where I am today. Uh, got to know people at a local wildlife trust and visited their place, they have a bit of land, and then they told me about friends, uh, such and such. They've got some land, they've got tons of bullfinches. You should go up there, went to visit, and then I've been here for the last two years, done a few videos here, including the hide, which I'm probably gonna include in this video. So if you are lucky enough that you've got access to that land, there's a few things that you wanna consider and look out for in terms of your photography moving forward. And one of the big ones, number one, is access. So how easy is it to access that land? And this is something that's put me off occasionally is because it's just too difficult to get on and off the land. It's just not practical. Um, if you have to go like, around their house, through their garden, for example, every time to get where you want to go. Is that practical? So personally, I want to cause as little disturbance, as noise as I possibly can. And think about if you're going to do spring, summer, early morning, for example, uh, you know, are you going to be parking outside the house and walking past, making noise early in the morning, waking people up, for example, or dogs barking? Dogs. Dogs. Yeah. And you've got to think about all these things. You're on their land and you need to respect that. So check the access. Also think about how the land might change over the seasons, particularly uh, relevant if it's farmland. So one season might be absolutely fine, but then does it change during the seasons? Again, in terms of access, uh, if there's crop fields, does that change in terms of sowing crops and harvesting, for example? Uh, maybe there's some shooting on the land. This is something I've experienced myself. Uh, in a negative sense. Um, if you've got people shooting like pheasants, for example, then that might affect your access at times. It might not, um, you know, it might not be a, a positive thing for you photographing wildlife. And then the other one is adjacent land. So wherever you work in, just 
check what is next door to you. Uh, where I am here, I'm actually right next to a golf course. So that was a consideration. I'm right by the boundary of a golf course, so I had to think about that. In actual fact, it's made very little difference. I don't think it's caused any issues at all. Uh, but you may have something going on immediately adjacent to the land uh, that's just gonna constantly cause noise and it's just gonna put the wildlife off. I think it's really, really important that you always tell the landowners what you're planning to do. Never assume that you know you can just do what you want there. It's gonna be okay because they've given you permission uh, in the first place. So if you're gonna be putting up a hide, even a temporary hide, then you need to let them know where it's gonna be and roughly for how long. Uh, if you're putting up something more permanent like this wooden hide I did a couple of years ago, then that's even more important to tell them this. And maybe even you have to dig a bit in the ground to get the hide lower, for example. I've done that a few times. That's always where I'll just check with the landowners is that that's okay so anything you're going to be doing anything you're going to be putting up make sure you get the permission for that and also just leaving things as you find them so if gates need to be shut then make sure you shut them uh, even if they need to be locked make sure you lock them all those things are really important uh, in keeping the trust of the landowner where you're working and in terms of offering the landowners something in exchange for working on their land, I think the best thing you can do initially is to offer a couple of photographs. So, uh, you know, just say when you've got images you're really happy with, just give them a print or two. And it's just a little thank you. If you do that now and again, uh, just a little thank you to let them know that you are grateful. And that kind of reminds me of what is probably the most important point in this video, the most important piece of advice I could give you, and that is to try and find somewhere where the landowners are already really interested in wildlife themselves. That is gonna make the biggest difference of all. Uh, if you're somewhere where they're already interested, they're already passionate about wildlife, then you're kind of gonna be on the same page. Uh, it's gonna be much easier, and you're less likely to get any potential problems or issues that might come up from getting access to the land. So if you can find those people with land, get access where they're already really interested in wildlife themselves, then that is gonna be the best thing that you can possibly do. Uh, bear in mind, everything I've talked about in this video is purely from my experience, but I do have quite a lot of experience in doing this, so I do think it's pretty good advice. Um, I know for a fact some of my viewers also have access, are lucky enough to have access to private land. Uh, so if that's you, feel free to share your experiences. Let me know how you've managed to do that, how you approach people, and not just for myself, but also for other people watching. It'd be really, really useful information. It was quite a popular question, this one, uh, to make a video on. So thanks for watching, and if you're not subscribed, do click the subscribe button wherever it may be please click the bell icon for notifications as well and i'll see you somewhere in nature sometime soon